the, when I submitted the talk, I submitted less than 20 minutes to talk. And uh, when I finished writing the slides Thursday, I realized that uh, 20 minutes weren't, weren't going to be enough. So I'm going to skim through the slides um, relatively fast, trying to deliver uh, the, juice, the juicy bits. Uh, these were the, uh, the, the things I've worked so far since I've been here in, in London. So a brief summary of what I'm going to talk about. Um, uh, just, just so you uh, keep up with me. Um, yeah. Brief, brief summary. So um, this is a story about packaging world and all the dependencies that our uh, application might, might, might require. So uh, when we started about doing uh, all this, where um, were we? Uh, we had a 64 bit file um, with 588 compiled for CentOS, for CentOS box. Even though we were deploying that Perl compiled for CentOS in a Red Hat uh, box, because production environments ran Red Hat. We had a traditional repository of all the binaries, of all the Perl binaries, and all the CPAC packages that, uh, that our applications use. Uh, and uh, traditionally, updating or installing a package uh, meant uh, um, CPAC, <coughs> CPAC package and git commit <coughs> minus AM, I update it or install the package. We prepend the, the location of our custom Perl. In our path, usually we export it under XC profile. We were checking out this Perl under a strict, under a strict directory um, because of hardcoded paths and all that uh, uh, stuff. And developers were using a multitude of, 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 of operating systems. This, this, this led to, yes, the deployment consisted of, yes, uh, just checking out the, the Git toggle and the application toggle on the, on the production server and, and, and get on with life. Of course, this had a lot of problems. A lot of problems because it was very tricky for developers to uh, update the um, modules. Developers running leading edge, leading edge functions of their favorite operating systems will usually, will usually uh, compile the system modules, modules that have uh, um, that will compile SO libraries against the current version of, of the shared libraries that they have on their operating systems, rather than compiling the modules against the uh, versions of those libraries that exist on the CentOS or for that matter the Red Hat system that we deploy. Uh, we had no idea of what we had. We had like just a bunch of files in the big repository. The production, staging, and testing boxes were, were, were really kept religiously. No one could touch them because installing and setting up a box like this was, was, was really a, a task for, to, take, to take a man uh, a week. Um, and usually trial and error, new code evolved, evolved, trying to understand, oh, um, yes, we're missing some, some dependencies. Of course, no. We were running no tests for, 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 for this Perl that we had, only when we were installing or updating a new CPAC module. So, <coughs> so we started thinking we need a way to describe all these dependencies that we have. And I suggested our PM because one of my colleagues in London uh, was working for a, a company and it was like just packaging their application uh, in, in, in our PM in a nice format. And they were using, they were using traditional system, system Perl that came with, with their Red Hat boxes. Uh, yes. At the time, we couldn't think of anything better to, to do this. So yes, let's, let's go with RPM. And our ultimate goal was, given a minimal install box, just um, bare bone uh, installation, just be able to deploy our application and have the operating system uh, figure out the dependencies for us rather than being the other way around. So yes, we knew what we wanted more or less, not really sure where we wanted to go. We started doing an inventory of what we had. So we had two, two basic, two, two main applications, a Modpro application and a Canvas application. That we, that we deploy on a three-week three basis. And what I did was I merged the make file of these, of these two projects, and the dependencies of these two make files merged. You have 235 CPAN packages that we were describing explicitly on the make file. Of course, a grand total of 618 CPAN packages were required to satisfy the dependencies of these 235. Um, I did a lot of investigation. I went through CPAN, Google, um, all everywhere, trying to find some answers. I, I checked CPAN spec, um, I read about CPAN 2 RPM, but still there were a lot of questions. So, how are we going to deal with this? Do we want uh, a Perl RPM package with N Perl modules packages? Wait a minute, who's going to deal with 618 builds? Uh, are we going to do a Perl binary RPM package and, and another package of all the models that we require? Or, well, can we get everything into one? Just one package and have everything that we need to do to deploy? And another way, how are we going to handle these 618 sources by hand? Um, yeah, um, I did check job as well this time. <laughs> <coughs> so tools, um, PM tools, which is uh, a model that we initially written by Tom Christiansen, if I'm not mistaken, gives you gives you a rundown of the models that you have, the versions. This coupled with a couple of bash scripts uh, to do some, some
some, 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 some simple, simple parsing. We, we opted to use Marco Vermeer's CPAN site. Um, the CPAN site direct code is, is going to be your own CPAN server. We didn't want a CPAN mirror. We wanted a, a CPAN kind of replica of the models we already, we already had. And yes, the question is still hanging here. How are we going to install 618 uh, packages? Then I remembered something very interesting, uh, which I, 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 I wasn't familiar with. Uh, as developers, um, we would traditionally install, install new modules by going to the main file of our application and either bumping up the version and running Perl make file and make, or just adding this dependency to the make file. And the make would make sure that all those dependencies would be installed. And I said, yeah, I think this is it. Can can't we assume that Perl is a project on itself with a make file, make file for dependencies? And this really um, did the trick. Uh, this is just a typical make file layout, and I'm just giving to I'm just sure you remember this because it's from from those. <coughs> so um, problems and pitfalls of, uh, of, the, of the approach. Getting the sources for the modules. So this this original git runner repository was something that we had been like adding adding up uh, to without without managing it that much. So. Uh, either, we, either we, were, we were fortunate enough to get the sources from CPAN, if not found, try to get it from BackPAN. If not, curse, uh, you know, and run away, and, uh, because some, some of it just could be found anywhere. I did find some in some random CPAN mirror in, in, in Japan, totally out of date with, with, current, with current CPAN um, uh, mirrors. And some of the models that we had have been, have been tweaked in house, so, and the developers who tweaked them just bumped up the version uh, a bit. And the solution was to get the original sources, get a bit of this, uh, these, uh, these modules, and have a patch ready for later to apply to these, to these pristine, pristine uh, module sources. More problems. So, yes, a lot of modules of these 618 have third party dependencies, like uh, MySQL, the libraries, OpenSSL libraries, Postgres. All these libraries have to be uh, present in the system where we're building our world and all our, all our uh, dependencies. Otherwise, the, the dependencies won't build, won't, won't build at all. For instance, the party depends on, on a specific toggle, the, the party toggle, which we have to download and install in the system so that that party can be successfully um, compiled and installed. Some of the models that we had didn't pass some tests, but some of the models didn't pass any tests at all, and that got me wondering uh, how was it that we ever got to install them in running in production? That really took some time, because all this was like a, a trial and error process that uh, I kept on bumping into. Okay, so um, an RPM spec file. An RPM spec file is really something very simple. It's just a clever wrapper uh, 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 around, around the sidewall. Um, and with this, with this wrapper, we can, we can either specify the requirements, specify the requirements, provide information, um, have a change log, and describe a recipe for, for build and the installation process. And, uh, and the funny bit about RPM, which is, which is actually the, the, the sharing of the game, is that after the whole RPM build process is done, and just before it reaches the package, um, the RPM build tools go through the go through the temporary tree tree of the installation, and for each file in the tree, using the file utility, it lists it lists the, the file type. So after that, it, it, it queries that file for what it's providing and what it's requiring. So in the end of the process, you have a list of everything that you require and everything that you provide to, in order to be able to, to install the RPM. And as an example, for instance, this is a provides example of, 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 of an RPM with a lot of CPAN, a lot of CPAN uh, models installed. You, you're saying that uh, um, I'm providing brightness, so I'm providing BZ2, I'm providing the backup loader, I'm providing Perl Catalyst module, I'm providing etc. etc. And, and I require, let's see, I require LPMG12, I require Link by SQL. I have to then, what, what this requires means is if I'm installing this RPM on, a, on an operating system, I need to have these libraries. If you don't have them, please, package manager, go fetch them for, for me because you, we need to have them there in order for me to, to install this, this, this RPM cleanly. And this does the, this does the difference really. Uh, this is just an example spec file. If I have more time, I'll go through, through it a bit. But this is really trivial. Uh, you guys can catch up. If you're not familiar, you can catch up in 30 minutes with the RPM basic spec file. Um, more tools. What I used uh, as well to, to, to accomplish all this was a, a, a nice feature of, of CPAN, which is CPAN initial preps. So all these bullet points were taken directly from the CPAN um, uh, uh, Perl 
implementation, apart from the first one. In our, in our, in our world, the, the 618 packages, we have a distro profile for badly behaved packages. For badly behaved packages. We have a lot of packages that install cleanly without fuss, but we have a lot of them which we have to either skip tests, either export environmental variables before we install the package. As a couple of examples, for instance, for, for the EV5 model, I need to uh, export these to environmental variables before I can start the, the installation of the EV file. For convert PM, I need to, um, there's a, a test that um, behaves badly. So by finding the test that I wanted to run and excluding the one that I, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm automatically saying, because if a test, if a test, um, if a package was installed and fails a test, we, 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 we mark the, the whole build process as, as, as a failure. So we want to be sure, and this, in this way, we, we're guaranteeing that, oh, this test is fairly, fairly uh, innocent, we can live with it failing, it, it's okay. Uh, alien, alien Active MQ, uh, we, we Alien Active MQ, by, by specifying a requirement, we are, we are telling people to the CPAN dependence process to say, delay the installation of Active MQ until you satisfy the, the file copy because otherwise Alien Active MQ will, will blow up in your face while it's installing. And as well, after you've extracted the sources of Alien Active MQ, please apply this patch before, before uh, running the installation. So we like no, we're just like, skipping, skipping the test suite altogether. We don't use this in production, it's just that the new utility that we use to be able to use the program uh, easier. So, yes, we get into, I was getting this as I was getting, getting really closer. So I had already merged the, pro, the, the both projects, many files together. I had already created a CPAN site with our packages. This, the, all this process was, was, was automatic. We had, uh, I had developed some scripts to make all this this uh, process streamlined and, and seamless, seamless. Had a config, uh, a rate CPAN config based in San Defaults, and as a newer on list, I was pointing to the CPAN site that I was creating based on my packages. Make our, just to try to speed up things, try to make um, the whole social system run a bit faster. And don't connect to the internet. Don't try to get any package from, from, the, from the internet. I'm providing a community to have. And I'll just provide a bit of info for from, from the next slides. I think I'm getting delayed here. Uh, but, uh, just bear in mind that percent is something in RPM spec like this. It's just like a scalar. And we usually use it to hold the uh, uh, bots. So, <coughs> what's the main recipe so far? We extract the Perl sources. We define a Perl based here as of ZT, ZT Perl, which is this where Perl will ultimately live when we install the RPM. We say configure prefix given the, the, the base path. We say make, it makes Perl. We say make this all Perl uh, into this destiny directory, which is a temporary destiny directory where we are installing Perl and where we're going to uh, be installing everything, everything else. We export a couple of libraries to help us during our uh, installation. We copy our with CPAN copy into the marketplace. We install bundled CPAN because the, 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 the CPAN that comes with 588 is, is buggy, is, is old, and uh, it doesn't have the capacity of using the, the distro graphs. So we install bundled CPAN so that, so that our Perl has the capability of using the CPAN. We install module install, which is the module on which our main files are, are based. So this will, this will allow us to, to do our, our uh, unattended magical installation of all the Perl models that we depend. We export Perl and use default so that the process is installed. We copy main file into the current printing directory and we say new Perl make file default test and make, make will start the whole installation process of all the main files given that everything is accounted for and given that we've excluded all the things that might go wrong. In the end, we will produce you a tree of Perl and all the CPAN modules that you might want to need to use your application. In this case, 618. Uh, and, and yeah, this is excellent. And uh, Perl RPM with everything you need. Yeah, rock on. Cool. So, um, of course, nothing that is good uh, is good forever. Uh, and uh, when deployed, uh, we, uh, we stumbled upon a problem and we were wrapping this, all, all this into the RPM process. It's the the point our customer will, will, is going to be living in this directory of, of TCT, ZT Perl, okay. So what happens when we're building this custom Perl on a system that already has a custom Perl install? Kaboom! Kaboom as in, as in when we go about the process of installing all the 618 modules, uh, our, our, our temporary Perl, our temporary Perl, Will say, will say, oh, I can find all these uh, dependencies already installed. So, there's nothing else to do. And uh, they say, oh, uh, wait a minute, we have a problem, Houston. Uh, because, because in Perl 588, uh, 
uh, the VM, well, the VM library costs are hard coded in, in the Perl binary itself. <laughs> so we came up with a couple of evil hacks to enable all this, which is after having built Perl and before starting the automatical model installation, we temporarily hack config VM and config heavy because there's a couple of models that rely on config uh, VM to get the location of, of, of uh, the libraries in, in, in Perl. So we say, for now, what we say here is substitute the, 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 what is going to be the, the base directory for the temporary base directory, just for now, and, and pretend that your, your, your libraries are all installed in, in, in the temporary Perl location that we're installing. Um, and of course, we already used our new Perl to, to do this for us. And, and the most evil of all hacks is, is this really. So Perl based here is CT CT Perl. This is where our Perl will live when it's installed, when the RPM is installed. But currently it's running from RPM build slash opti slash CT slash CT Perl. Mm -hmm. So what we say is, uh, we have the Perl based directory, we garble it, we basically substitute slashes 5%, and we use our new Perl to fix itself. As in, as far as these libraries, these parts are coded in them, we don't want to override any other memory bits, that any other binary bits, we just want to substitute the slashes by, by percents, knowing that in, in the end we're going to um, make it back as it was. Um, and basically, what we end up doing is, 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 is fixing Perl and allowing Perl, by, by the means that we have already exported Perl 5 layer, to be able to find, to, to or, or, or better not find, that it has already the libraries installed in this temporary location that we already saw. And just as a, an example, this is the output of a Perl minus V of a Perl being installed in progress, and as you can see. So the first, the first couple of lines of link are populated by the fact that Perl 5 lib has been exported. And, and these, last, these last lines of the game is, are populated by the fact that they are, are, are coded in Perl. So this is after our magical substitution. So much so that if I run this in Perl in tank mode, it won't be able to find anything. And this is actually a problem on one of the modules. Uh, we skipped the test that where, where it spawns a version of Perl in tank mode, because we know that it installs cleanly. Uh, and that's how we get around the problem. And this is, yes, this is an old feel like um, a problem. So, wrapping all this up, for the RPM um, um, spec file in particular, uh, at the, we basically just say, well, to build this Perl and all its dependencies, I require you to have these libraries that satisfy the, the dependencies of the packages that I'm installing. Uh, I have a, a prep stage um, in the RPM to do some custom validation in the packages the sources. I have a build stage to configure and build Perl. The install stage to do this magical, main, do the magical main file bits. After all the modules that have been installed, I make sure I do all the info I did. I make everything exactly the same. I amend our rigs with a C and config, just putting some, some same values in it. And after all this, uh, the RPM process continues and goes on listing all the provisor requirements and finally wraps it up, wraps it all up in a big RPM package, which is uh, Perl in 680 modules, uh, 35 meg. Um, and um, when you install it to the system, <coughs> this will say, oh, I need this library, this library, this library, and I'm providing this module, this module, and this module. So basically, what happens is, you have your application, and we did the same kind of uh, homework to our applications. We grabbed the tarballs that we were deploying into RPMs. And I have an application that says, as, as an RPM, says, oh, I am application true, and I require library A, B, C, D, and E in order to exist in the system, in order to be able to run properly. So in a bare bones minimal install box, I just say, install my application. And the package manager of the operating system says, oh, your application requires your custom Perl. Uh, your custom Perl requires this library, this library, and libpng, and libjpeg, and mysql, and it does all the work for us. What this allowed us to do, um, also, it's, it's easier to spot missing packages from the perspective, perspective of the dependent package. Say our application tool that we're installing. If I just added a, a new module, uh, I'm using a new module on my, on my application, say, I don't know, most active player. And if I'm not installing this module on Perl, on, on our custom Perl RPM, this, this module won't be, won't be defined as, a, as, as being provided at, at, on the RPM. So the, the package manager, when it goes to install my packages, says, oh, I can't find 
I'm missing this dependency that I can't fulfill. So you can't install your package because, well, most likely your Perl is missing that, 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 that package. Fast popping of bad behavior models, as I said. Uh, so in this, in this uh, installation of the 683 models, either the model installs cleanly, in either the, all the tests pass, or we have no package. And this enabled us to replicate environments like if they were mushrooms. So initially we had three environments that were kept religiously, no one could touch them. And, and now, given it, you have a, a minimal install, a installed environment, and you can just throw your application at it, and everything will just install automatically with all the dependencies, they just need to start your application. So much so that um, we've run from three to uh, 13, 13 environments, and we almost stopped here because we ran out of kit. There's no more kit to, to, to provision the environments. Um, there's a couple of negative points, of course. Uh, nothing's for free. Uh, so, <coughs> from the perspective of the developers, the module updates are not as straightforward as before. Before you just say, see, can install this, and you wouldn't care. You wouldn't care about anything else. Now we're enforcing a bit more integrity on the whole on, on the whole package that we have. Because say for instance, say for instance, you decide to upgrade your Moose to a, 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 an I version. You upgrade your Moose, you download the package, you run the Perl make install, and it runs all the tests cleanly, and yes, you're happy and, and you're content. But uh, have you have you um, after installing this new Moose, have you gone through all the packages that depend on Moose? And have you run all the tests to see if they still if they still comply with with, with the new that you just installed? You don't do this. And uh, under this under this uh, paradigm, you do because when when you kickstart the installation of the modules, we're basically it's it's CPAN. We are sourcing all this work to CPAN, and CPAN just goes about installing the 680 modules from a perspective of a hierarchical tree. It, it installs them, so every, everything everything has to have the requirements in place in order to be installed, and everything has to the tests. Um, another negative point is the build time. This is the build time is tied to CPU. Uh, as, as an example, it takes 84 minutes to build Perl and 618 dependencies on a virtual build work. Yes, it's okay. Um, and no point of drawing memory. Memory is And um, yes, final thoughts. I'd like to thank my colleagues uh, at NAP for their input and feedback, most valuable. I recommend this experiment. It's most likely to be possible to, to replicate on the dead end. The initial process is tedious, but with going through, once everything is streamlined, there's nothing just building on top, and you just keep on building on top. I've worked for the strategy as a problem, but it's one thing that's still in the Any questions? <laughs> Feel free to watch and just ask me any questions or buy me gears if you want to. Thank you very much.